Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. I have recently brought the Xtool P2 into my workshop and we'll be doing some testings and I will have a full review down the road. But as I'm going through my tests, a lot of things I do are material tests of various types, both cuts and engraves. And I know that's something that people want to do themselves. So this video, I am going to walk through setting up material tests within Xtool Creative Space so that if you've just gotten your P2 and you're wondering where to start, or maybe you even have the Xtool D1 or even the F1, this will apply to all of the lasers. Now, the numbers I'm using are gonna be related to the P2 as well as the material I'm using, but you'll be able to take these methods to set up the parameters and adjust them for your laser to be able to run your own material tests. So if that's something you wanna learn how to do, just curious how it works in Xtool Creative Space, stay tuned, we're gonna jump right into it. All right, so we are going to jump into Xtool Creative Space and play around with the material test array tool that they have built into it. This is something you're going to want to get used to doing with any new material you're working with on any material on any laser with uh, Xtool or otherwise, but we're going to focus on how to set this up in Xtool Creative Space. You don't need to pay for these material tests. They're very easy to set up yourself. So uh, I want to show you that really quickly. So let's go ahead and jump into Creative Space. I've got it set up here and we have the P2 powered on and it has already taken a image of what's in our bed. So I'm working with some three millimeter Baltic birch plywood here. And uh, so what we're going to do is first set up a few parameters for it. Uh, now you can have it auto focus on your material. So you would just come over here to your aimed measure have it click on kind of the center point of your object and it's going to estimate a thickness. Now I know that this material is actually three millimeters thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and override that as three millimeters. Now what we wanna do is pick our uh, vector style of uh, object that we are going to be working with. I'm gonna be starting with cut tests on this one and you can do squares, you can do circles, but I like to do kind of a hybrid of that and they have a shape built into Creative Space here that works really well. So if you come to shape here, go up to basic shapes, hit the little carrot here. What I'm looking for is this kind of rounded, uh, almost like a teardrop or a raindrop side kind of cornerize. The reason I like this one is because you have both rounded edges and a nice sharp corner. Those can cut differently because of the acceleration and the deceleration around the corner as well as the constant curve, um, it gives you kind of the straight lines, it gives you the sharp 90 degree corner, and it gives you the rounded shape. So I like using that shape as well. You can definitely pick out any of these that you want, uh, but this is the one I like because it kind of gives us the most well-rounded idea of how it's gonna handle most objects. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. We're gonna bring it in to our work area, and I'm gonna drag it over to this corner. Now this is obviously way too big. It is measuring 40 by 40 millimeters, so that is well over an inch and a half. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop this down to about six millimeters. That's about a quarter inch. And uh, that will give us a better size there. So if we zoom in on this, sorry, I'm just using the wrong buttons, you'll see that we now have a smaller shape. So now we wanna set up our array, but first we wanna make sure we set our processing type first. This is what, when you select that material array, it's gonna base it on. Uh, and so the first one I want to do is a cut as opposed to a score or an engrave. So we're going to go over here, click on cut. Now come up to your array tool and come down to your material test array and click on that. This will bring up this window that allows us to change our parameters. Now when cutting, generally we're going for speed. And so we're going to be in the upper end of the power scale. So I'm not going to waste time testing from like zero to 50%. We're going to start minimum 60% power. We'll let it go all the way up to 100% power. And you'll see our grid over here has changed from to 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. If we had left this on 10, you would see that it's jumping up 10, 33, 55. And you, know, you could adjust that if you wanted to do all 10%. What I would recommend is coming here and adding columns so that you get it into at least jumps of 10 millimeters or 10% power. So here it'd be 10, 20, all the way up to 100. But like I say, we're going to go with 60 to 100 and we're gonna start a little broad here and just keep it at the five columns so that we go up by tens. Now for the speed, um, here's where you wanna do a little bit of research and you can get input from others, but really this is why we do these material tests. You really wanna dial it in for your laser, your environment, your wood. All those variables can have a little bit of effect. 
So just taking someone's word, I'm like, oh, I had this three millimeter material I cut at this speed. That might be a ballpark starting figure, but you might be faster, you might be slower. Now Xtool has a three millimeter basswood, which is close to this, but maybe a little bit lighter. Um, Baltic birch is probably a little more dense. So I'm gonna use that as my medium. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go five under and five over. So we are going to come over here and our minimum power is going to be 30 millimeters a second and our maximum is going to be 40 millimeters a second. So that puts that 35 millimeters a second right in the middle range. And then again, over here, you'll see it's actually jumping from 30, 33, 35, 38, and six, uh, 40. So we are gonna to wanna to bump this up to, I think 11 rows to get them all in there. So now we're 31, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. That gives us the nice spectrum of that. Now, the last thing we can play with is the spacing. If you really want to, um, you could spread these out more so we could go at five millimeters and it would put more distance in between them. Uh, or we could go at one and it's gonna put them really tight. At the risk of putting them too tight is you get a little bit of extra overburn from the kerf. Um, I would leave it at no less than three. Um, but if you need to go into a tighter spot and uh, still have that range, you could adjust those as needed. So once we have these all set up, we can go ahead and hit okay. And of course, we're gonna to wanna to drag this more into our working area. And uh, now you can see we have our test scale set up, uh, cut test X tool P2, our speeds going up on the left side, our power on the bottom. And at the end of this, we should have something of an array to look at to see where the optimal cut settings are. So um, we've already done set our thickness. And um, the only other thing we could do is if we wanna get a capture, a close up view to just to make sure we're really on there, we might wanna Take this over here and just ensure that it's not off by far. And um, we're off a little bit there, but it's still well within. So this is why you wanna use the, the capture close view if you're really trying to dial it in on a tight space. That's gonna really get a honest view of where your material's at. The wider one, it's a wider angle lens, it's taking the whole bed at the same time. There's gonna be a little aberration, but the close up view moves the head over to it, gets a really straight down shot, helps us out with that. So at this point, we're just going to go ahead and hit process. And uh, it's a little preview of what we're gonna get. We hit start. We're gonna go back to the P2 and hit the start button and watch this burn. All right, so we did run the file twice. I always like to run it more than once just to make sure there's no aberrations in the material. It gives you a better baseline. And they're fairly consistent. Uh, it was actually cutting out a little faster than I thought. We were getting through it at 39 uh, millimeters a second and 80, 90, 100% power. The interesting thing is, is that they, they kind of stayed fairly consistent. Uh, down at the 70 and 60% power, it really didn't want to cut through. Now, the reality is there's just some really small fibers holding them on, on both sides. So I could actually just push these through on most of them and they'll fall out. So that may be okay for you if you're looking for just complete drop out, uh, no touch at all. Um, you're gonna need to stick in the higher power range, but you could bump down a little bit lower. So like I can just push this one out and uh, it will, should fall out, there we go. So we can easily still get um, through at 60 and 70% power, just there's a little, little bit of fibers that are holding on at that point. But this gives us a good range to know that for this material, we can definitely be cutting almost up to 40 millimeters a second, which is fairly impressive uh, compared to the other diodes and, and even my older 60 watt CO2. Um, I don't think it ever got through this material at that speed. So, uh, 
Hopefully this gives you a good idea on the cut. Let's go ahead and try it as well on the engrave, just to kind of give you an example of what we might be looking for there. Okay, so we also want to try doing an engrave test grid. So this is gonna be a little bit different in that we're gonna expand our range because we do want the full 10 to 100% power. And uh, we'll probably need to go uh, a little bit, uh, same, same kind of range in speeds as well to really get a good gradient. So let's jump back into creative space. I've uh, put our material back in because we can fit this on the same card and then it becomes a really nice reference card for us to look at. And uh, we're gonna do very similar again. We want to make sure we have our material still set at three millimeter. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit select a shape. This time I'm gonna do a slightly different shape. Um, I'm going to actually take a five pointed star. Um, this, uh, besides just looking kind of cool, it also will show us kind of the ability of the laser to start and stop and how fine of those points we get. So we can both look at color and making sure that we're getting uh, a good quality engrave and not getting weird lines at higher speeds. So once again, we're gonna scale this down, probably not quite to six, but I'm gonna go about, uh, let's try it at eight millimeters. So we do want a little more area and the star natively kind of cuts it down, but uh, that'll be pretty good. And uh, I'm actually gonna move this over to this side just so we can see the grid as it's forming. That's one of the things that uh, I wish they would change a little bit about this because when we hit our array tool and whoop, almost forgot, we wanna come over here and we wanna switch this to engrave. And uh, generally they specify 100 lines per centimeter. So we're gonna leave that alone and bi-directional. Now we're gonna hit our array tool and you see this window comes up. We can't move this. So if I would have left that star behind here, it would be hidden behind this window. So I like seeing it built out as we change our parameters. I just wish I could move the, the, uh, this pop-up window around just to kind of get it out of the way. But that's why we moved over here. So we wanna play with our settings. Well, of course, like I mentioned, we wanna go full from 10% to 100% to really get the full range, but we're gonna to wanna to up our columns. So we're gonna take that to 10. And uh, it's a little hard to read because we have our other stuff there, but we are seeing 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to 100. So our columns are good. And here's where we want to change our speeds. I believe X tool for similar type material, they recommend right around 200 millimeters a minute or millimeters a second, my apology. Uh, so I'm going to go, let's start at 150 and let's go up to 450. And with that, I want a little more gradient. So we're gonna add, we're gonna go 50, 200. Yeah, we're gonna go up by 50 millimeters a second. That should give us a pretty decent range. So we're going from 150 all the way up to 450 in millimeters a second, and then 10 to 100% power. Everything here looks good. We're gonna hit okay. So that's gonna build out our grid. And we can move this over into our open space. And you'll see that they're filled in. So we're on an engraved setting. Uh, and now all that's left is to process it, send it to the laser and uh, hit the start button. We'll watch it go. All right, and so our engrave did finish. As you can see there, we have a pretty decent gradient. Uh, but what you'll notice is there is a lot of this kind of uh, smoke and debris overburn. And so one thing that I do with these, especially on this fly material, is I'm gonna take this over to my random orbit sander, uh, put some like 240 grid on there, something really light. It'll just sand away that very top little kind of smearing of smoke and debris. And that'll give us a clearer picture of what this looks like. So let's go do that really quick and come back and then take a good look at the results. All right, so I have it cleaned off. And so now it is a bit easier to see. I'll give you a good shot of it there. We have a really nice gradient there all the way 
starting at 150 millimeters a second on up to 450. And so the question is, how do you interpret this? Well, it, it really depends on what you're going for. In some cases, you're just looking for some contrast and maybe you're looking for a certain color. You're gonna be able to base it on that. The other thing though is this at 150 millimeters a second, 100% power, actually it has some pretty decent depth to it. As a matter of fact, we can take our micrometer here and drop that in there. And we're actually at 1.53 millimeters. So it is actually blasted through halfway through this material. So if you're looking to have that depth, maybe you want to play around a little bit with epoxy and fills and such, that'll give you an idea of what might be possible. Um, but also, you know, a much darker engrave there at the slower speeds versus we still have a little depth up here at the top, but it's not as dark. So you're basically looking for two things, you know, the, the depth of the cut and the color of the cut that you're looking for with these engravings. So it's very good to kind of have one of these for each of your materials, be able to use it as a reference saying, well, I'm kind of looking for more of this tone or I don't want it too deep. Um, I just want a very light marking. Um, that's what these will do. Uh, now, if you're looking for a shallow but deeper depth on here, that's gonna be a little bit trickier with the CO2. That's where the diodes really shine. So looking at your X-Tool D1 Pro, you're gonna get a darker engrave with less depth to it. So you can play around with some lighter passes multiple uh, to see if you can do that. But uh, that's just one thing you might notice on the CO2. You're gonna have a little bit lighter engraving, but you are also gonna be able to go deeper a lot easier. So. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to set up and uh, play with the engraving material test as well. All right, so there you have it. We have here both a cut and engraved test for this material, three millimeter Baltic Birch done with the X-Tool P2 and all set up within X-Tool Creative Space. So I hope this can help you create your own test grids on your own material, help you really dial in your settings when using X-Tool Creative Space. Again, this applies not only to the P2 laser that I used in this video, but with the D1, the F1, and all of Xtool's machines that can connect to Creative Space. So please use this tool in this software. You can dial in your settings. You don't have to worry about it. Just make sure you have some extra material to run these each time you get something and it'll make your engravings and your cuts that much better. So I hope you found this video informative and if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. I do try to get back to those as quickly as I can. And uh, if I earned your trust and respect, maybe hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, see what I do up next. I do uh, a lot of reviews, project videos, as well as instructional videos like this one, just to help out the community as uh, we all get better as the more we share. So I uh, hope you found this informative and, uh, and can make something good out of it. So anyway, thanks again for watching this video. I always enjoy being able to help people out like this and uh, hopefully you will catch me in the next one. But in the meantime, hope you can get out to your workshop and make something too. We'll see you soon.